Hello everyone and welcome back to Master of Orion, our let's play of the 5x Ultimate Balance mod. I'm Mal and I'm once again joined by El Capitan Sabouts. Hello sir. Hello. Hola. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, before we get into this thing that we're going to do here in a minute that I'm being a little vague about, um, let, 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 let's, have a, let's have a conversation, a, a, a little bit of a, of, a, of a parlay as it were. With regards to a couple things. One, I want to know your thoughts on the 5X Ultimate Balance mod. I know we've talked about it bits and pieces here, but now that we're coming towards the end, kind of what you think the game is like with it, uh, you know, how the overall experience is, and in particular, what you think about, you know, insane difficulty. And then maybe we could talk a little bit about Massive Orion, just sort of in general, the state of the game. Well, I mean, the 5X Ultimate Balance mod, that's the only way to play the game I, I honestly feel at this point if you're gonna play master of orion there's no reason not to play the game be, uh, with this mod because it's not like it completely changes everything it's not like it introduces you know um stuff that's completely game changing you're still getting the master of orion experience the conquer the stars experience but you're getting it uh at a more enhanced uh, level so it just takes the base game and makes it better. There's certain things it does add and change, but anything the mod changes or added, it does it for the better. There's just no reason not to play uh, the game without it. I especially like uh, all the different uh, the research at the end that it added. I, I know we didn't really get to get to all of it, but I mean, if you get to there, there's some really cool stuff. Um, some of the way the research was uh, changed up I mean, it was, it was nice to see the research uh, overdone a little bit. And then the impossible difficulty in general. Uh, for me... Well, I mean, looking at looking at the chain, we actually did get pretty far. I mean, I'm at Galactic Networking, which is one away from Temporal Fields. Oh, okay. So, I mean, we did get pretty far. I mean, there's some tech, you're right, that we didn't, that we didn't get to, but... Um, I think we got to showcase we got to showcase a lot of it. We did, which is cool. A lot more than we ever did before. That's for sure. Yep, absolutely. Um, let's see. Speaking of which, what is your what are you up to now? I'm at twenty four hundred research per turn now. Twenty four. I'm at sixteen. You're way yeah. ahead of me. It's because I ran up to that. Um, whatever it was, Galactic Cybernet, which I gave you too. You could build those. Oh yeah, and I'm working. I was working on building some of those and some of the planets. Yeah, that's huge. But it starts to spiral once you get that far up. But yeah, I think it's cool. I also like the fact that oh, there was a lot of tech injected, like the advanced resource extraction. That was that added a lot of like sort of like neat middle game tech that you could add in. I like the fact that early game tech was changed, that you immediately had access to things like military transports. I think that made a big difference and changed the dynamic of the game. Like, I don't know, having played this now, what, we've done two? Yes. Two Let's Plays? Two of them. Yeah. I, I I don't know that I could go back, nor would I want to. I agree with you. Like, I don't know why anybody would play Master of Orion, Conquer the Stars without the 5X balance mod. Like, I don't, I just wouldn't, do, I wouldn't do it at this point. Um, I, think, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, no reason really not to uh, use it. It just m takes the game and makes it better. So... Now let's let's uh, let's talk just for a second here, because right? I'm curious. What do you think about um, if you take the five X balance mod out of the picture completely? Like it did, like to say it didn't exist, and there was a recent patch. And yeah, I know some people can tell me the patch was messed up or whatever. Listen, they're gonna hot fix it, so your custom races will work again. But but so they did add a lot of things and they did fix a lot of things with this most recent patch. And for point of reference, this is towards the end of April of 2017, if you're from the future and you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm curious if, what do you think of the, the state of Master of Orion without the mod? Well, I gotta say that, you know, Master of Orion as a whole, um, it, is a, it is a good game and it it does what it was m intended and set up to do. It's it's a fun 4X game. It's it's uh, It works. It's well laid out. I mean, it has an AI that had that on higher difficulty levels, even though they're artificially created uh, through bonuses. I mean, the AI does compete with you. 
Uh, but um, with all of that said, do I think Master of Orion's a good game? Yes, I do think it's a good, good game, but uh, I think it could be a better game. And I know you could say that about anything, but uh, the biggest thing with Master of Orion is that whereas you might look at a lot of Forex games and they get... Um, you know, expansions or add-ons. I mean, I think we can safely agree that Wargaming in general is just done with Master of Orion. I don't think they're going to do anything with it. I don't think the game performed as well as they thought it would, uh, sales-wise. Yeah. And it's, I think, I think there were some very unrealistic projections on what it was going to yeah. do. I, um, I feel like had the game been another company developing it, um, they would have been happy with how the game did, and I think they would keep adding on to it some expansions, some major updates. But even though Master of Orion's a good game, my biggest disappointment is the fact that it could be a better game, but Wargaming just isn't going to put the effort into it because the game is not going to do as well as they probably felt it would. Right, right. Yeah, no, I think I think maybe they just had some pretty aggressive sales projections from the onset. And... You know, I, I've said this before, actually, in, in other conversations like this that I've had um, with, with people, that from a certain standpoint, they were kind of kind of in a rock and a hard place, right? They're damned if they did and damned if they didn't, because if they innovated too much, then the people that were diehard, um, you know, Master of Orion and Master of Orion 2 in particular players would have objected significantly, right, and wouldn't have um, supported the game. And if they didn't innovate enough, they had a crowd of people who were saying, well, they didn't do enough to modernize it. Why didn't they modernize it? And it was like, okay, so you, you kind of had two factions of the pre-existing player base. People that just wanted a f update of Master of Orion 2, and then people that wanted mas the Master of Orion universe, but wanted a totally new experience. And what happened was they sort of rode the fence and gave you a little bit of both. And so neither of the established crowd, I think, was 100% going to be happy. And there was just no way around that. Yeah, they couldn't really so, please everyone, that's for sure. Yeah, and you never really can. Um, my disappointment with Master of Orion Vanilla um, is that there was low-hanging fruit that they that they never they never fixed. Like why why don't ships why don't their crews improve over time? So a game from twenty something years ago had that, but you couldn't put that into this one, so that ships had more value. Yep. Um, you can't retrofit your ships using your your industry. You have to pay credits. That's just uh, stupid. Um, and the fact that they never changed that is a huge miss. Um, and those are things that they should have addressed post-launch. These bug fixes and everything else, that should have been like a given. The fact that they didn't go back and add in the features that they should have had from the beginning is really a shame. So I think Master of Orion is an okay game. And I've seen it on sale for like whatever, 15 or 20 bucks US. Um, and it's okay. And it's probably worth 15 or 20 bucks. Um, it's not worth the $60 that I paid um, for it. Matter of fact, I'm annoyed that I paid that price for it, quite frankly. Yeah, you and me both. Um, uh, but now that's for the vanilla experience. With the 5X Ultimate Balance mod, um, and I actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to borrow a phrase from you, about. You know, it's that whole, um, I'm annoyed I have to install the game so I can play the mod that I want to play. How do you say that? <laughs> yeah, it's how I, say. It? <laughs> I, I, I download the mod and then I get frustrated because I realize I have to pick up the original game DLC. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely the case for me with this. I think I think if you could pick up Master of Orion on sale um, and then you get the 5X Ultimate Balance mod, then you're set. Like it's 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 then a very good game. Um, instead of just being sort of an average game, I think it's a really, really good game. So I will, I will definitely say that. And I've enjoyed playing it. I mean, I've played a ton of this version of Master of Orion, and I did so through all of its development phases. Um, so when I, when I, when I sound a little harsh about the vanilla game, uh, it's still worth what they're asking for it today, twenty or thirty dollars. Um, and then definitely, if you're going to play with the Five X Ultimate Balance mod, it's 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 definitely worth getting, in my opinion. I would agree with that, definitely. All right, so we have covered kind of what we think about the Ultimate Balance mod and the state of Master of Orion. How about we tell people what we're going to do now? Well, right now, where it stands, we both have agreed that we're kind of hitting that foot slog portion of the game. We've run away. 
Um, I mean, the Alarians are completely destroyed economically wise and even infrastructure wise. I mean, we pretty much tore them apart and the Trillarians can't even compete and the Bolrathi are almost out of the game because the Trillarians are destroying them. So both of us have kind of but agreed. But about on the score and the conquest victory, the Chilarians are at the top, yeah. man. What do you mean? Yeah, at the top. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get that comment. I know we will. Well, but the the reality is the Chilarians can't do anything. Look at their ship design. If you actually zoom in on their ships, you'll see that. I mean, I've got a cruiser here with twenty four firepower, three hundred and fifty seven defense rating. Like, yeah, here's a Titan with five eighteen offense and fifteen hundred defense. Yeah, or, like compared to uh, I've, our fleets, their fleets, like they've got this big fleet here, but even that compared to mine is a joke. <laughs> my my Titan has almost three times as much firepower and let's see. Yeah, almost three times as much firepower and the same defense. Yeah, like my victory chances, even with their largest fleet, are pretty much overwhelming. So uh, there's no, there's just no reason to even drag out it would just be dragged out i mean if we finish up the war with the Ilarians and then went after the Trillarians, it would just be a slog fest it'd just be us spending eight episodes just taking their planets because they literally once we crush their major fleet they've got nothing to contend us and even their major fleet it says my fleet could just step all over us so so what we've decided to do is we're both going to attempt to go into the interran portal and win that way that's our plan so as you can see here this fancy looking he hit it from everybody but he's got a fancy Doomstar. That's why his fleet looks so nice. Look at that. The Darlock Doomstar is badass. Yeah, it's awesome. Looks like something out of Battlestar Galactica. Like the Cylons had a secret ship and that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really <laughs> cool. It looks so cool. So he's going to go in and try to defeat the Antarans. And then my fleet's not nearly as powerful. But if he's successful, then what we'll do is we'll make a quick cut in the video. And then I will try to do it as well so that we'll see whether or not each of us could take the Antarans. And hopefully we win, in which case we legitimately have won this series. But we wanted to give you the rationale behind why we were doing it. One, I've never done. Have you ever killed the Antarans? I never have. I never have either. Not in this one or any of the other ones. Okay, so that's the first thing is neither one of us has done it. But the other was that, like we had explained, it was just going to be like a long drawn out process to try to take out all of these systems. Um, and even with the new patch and the term time has gotten better, it's it's still quite a bit on the, the how many systems and stuff that we have. And we have to manage all these planets. Um, so we just figured this would be a better way to try it. So without further ado, El Capitan Sabouts, you want to go for it? Here I go. Oh, I got him. There we go. And there should be a little swirly thing there for you to enter the wormhole or pocket dimension or whatever. I think we got to go to the next turn. Really? It doesn't. It's not showed up on your. It's not on the bar. Nope. Maybe because I okay. just moved there. Probably takes a turn to go in. Yeah, I've got the jump option. You don't. Nope. Oh wait, I got it now. I got it. Yep. Never mind. I lied. Okay. Oh, here we go. Okay. They've got a Doomstar. I see that Doomstar. Boy, wow. They have a massive fleet. I have faith in you. All right. I have faith in you. I've got a pretty big fleet, though, too. Let's go ahead and resolve this. I'm really curious just on the results of how I'm going to do, how many ships I'll actually lose, if not all of them. Hey, do me a favor. Have you started the fight yet? Yeah, I just started it. Simulating. All right. Take when it when it's done. Take a screenshot of that for me because I want to put it up on 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 this video. Like your results. I want to see your results. Yes, the Darlocks are victorious. Wow, I don't even <laughs> think I lost a single ship. <laughs> All right, folks, so we're gonna make it quick. So we've won because this is an allied victory. So even if I let us down, it doesn't matter because the Darlocks have taken us to victory. So we're gonna make a quick cut in the video, and I'm gonna get. I'm, we're gonna we're gonna reload, and I'm gonna give it a try. All right. So we'll see you in a second. All right. Okay, folks, we're back. All right, I'm jumping in. It's about. I'm jumping oh, in. Oh boy. Here it goes. Oh, good lord. Man, you that's a kidding. that's a massive fleet. Yeah, they've got. They got 55 ships led by a Doomstar. Okay. Well, I mean, it says I've got balanced. What was your victory chances? I think it was good or very good. Here it goes. Oh, man. 
Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> victory! Nice. Woo-hoo. I only lost eight ships. Wow. Well, yeah, I think that's about what I lost actually. So I mean, if we if we could beat the and Terrans, and we can beat anyone at this point. Man, they they are seriously just scary looking, aren't they? They're horrifying. Yeah, they did a really good job making them look bad, like like terrifyingly badass. Yeah, it'd be really cool to be able to play as them. I wonder if there's a mod that lets you do that. I bet there is. All right, so let me see here. Let's. I'm gonna highlight. I'm doing the. I'm looking at the in-game results. I don't. Do you have that option? I do. Yep. Okay, so I'm just looking at that. I was looking at score. And I was just gonna kind of go through this kind of over the time here. It looks like it really. Yeah, it looks like somewhere around turn. Where did it really start to break for us? Look um, at the, looking at it, it looks like maybe turn two eighty is when I. That looks like when I like took my massive hike. Yeah, it looks like somewhere around. If you look at colonies, that's probably actually. You know what the most telling is going to be is pop. So we were on a steady climb. We were on a steady climb, and then somewhere around, where did we start to break? 297. 240? 250? Yeah. Well, yeah. And then it went crazy. If you look at 297, that's when we, both of us, spiked real hard. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, and then just, yeah, and then we just overtook. Look at army while we're at it. Oh, wow, that was crazy. The army jump was insane. Yeah, wow. Actually, pretty much everyone had fallen off by, like, turn 250. I mean, yeah, if you look at that, everybody's pretty much... They all just... It's almost like the AI just kind of, like, maxed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's like we talked about. It's like, if, even on higher on higher difficulties, in this case, we played on Insane, all those artificial bonuses at some point don't matter. Because if you can stay in the game long enough, then it doesn't matter... How much production they have or how much research they have because it's going to all balance out you're going to eventually catch up and if you can then it's then it's just the ai how smart it is versus us and you know we'd like to think we're at least smarter than that exactly so. <laughs> you just max out your technology and whatnot for the most part i mean you do you really do catch up and if you go to war with a couple of people like we did with the cylons knock out the big power players early in the game i mean it makes a difference that was that was a big deal i think I think making the making the decision to go after the Cylons early before they could spiral out of control tech wise. Yep. And taking out the humans, uh, simply because they were a convenient target and allowed us to absorb their resources. I think those two decisions. I think those two decisions gave us the win. I think so too, especially that early decision for the Cylons because both of us were kind of. A little nervous at first to do that. It was our first major conflict. Cylons can be pretty powerful. Uh, well, they had us way outgunned. It took us forever to get rid of them. It did, yeah. It took a lot of crafty playing, really. Plus, plus that whole let's keep, let's keep one colony alive and steal their tech thing, that was hilarious. That worked perfect. <laughs> and then once we got all their tech, that was it. We just killed them. We just killed them. Yeah, that was perfect. Well, I had a lot of fun with this one, buddy. I appreciate you... Uh, playing another another you know lp of the ultimate balance mode yeah that was a blast uh, with me and we won really impossible really difficulty we we won we won and uh yeah on impossible i think i said insane earlier <laughs> ah the same thing <laughs> stellaris because of stellaris <laughs> Which we're not winning in that one right now. Just nope. Side note. Not yet. We're not winning in that one. But, but, but I have faith, though. I have faith in us. Yeah. No one else seems to have any faith in us on that game, but I have faith. <laughs> but, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. What do you think about revisiting this at some point down the road? And I don't mean, like, in, I don't mean soon, but, like, some point much later down the road. Yeah, it's always a possibility. Maybe, uh, who knows, maybe the mod will continue to improve and maybe modders will kind of crack the game open a little more. We might see some really cool mods coming out. It would be cool if they did, if they were able to. I know that, that Spud uh, Dastardly, who is the, the, the designer for the 5X Ultimate Balance mod, he had indicated that there was just only so much that they had access to um, in terms of being able to inject like new gameplay and or features. But who knows? He he actually worked on the new patch that they released at the end of, um, of, of April of 2017. So maybe he'll get more access maybe, they'll maybe provide him with more tools it'd be cool that'd be the smart thing it'd be cool to see them turn the game over i mean they could still make money off the game but if they turned it over you know somewhat to the community and allowed the community to kind of go with it 
I mean, it's happened before in the past with other titles, and sometimes it works out really well, uh, especially for the replayability of a game. So, sure. Well, and they make the money selling new copies of the game. Exactly. So it's it's in Wargaming's best interest to turn over as many tools to the modders as they can. Yep. And it keeps so hopefully they will keeps people coming back to the game for all sorts of different types of mod. When there's a hundred different ways to play a game, people keep playing it. Yeah. Exactly. Well, any final thoughts, sir? The AI got smacked around pretty good. I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> I am too. I am too. All right, folks. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this series and that you join us for another series. We're currently playing Stellaris on Insane Difficulty. Myself, about and another one of our friends, Vanguard. Uh, we're also starting uh, a new series with um, another buddy of ours here in the not-too-distant future, another strategy title. So hope that you check that out. If you enjoyed this one, chances are you may enjoy another one. So we look forward to seeing you there. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Mal, he's about, and we'll see you later.